So in this video, I'll be doing the Reading Habits book tag. Um, my mother told me that I needed to do this tag and you have to do what your mother says. Um, I could not find the originator of this tag, the person who created it. I looked around YouTube quite a bit, uh, trying to see if I could find somebody who knew who the creator was, <clears throat> but nobody seemed to. And then one uh, booktubers video that I came across said that the person had actually deleted their video. And so nobody seems to know who the person was. So we'll just have to get along without knowing who made the tag up. Uh, the first question is, do you have a certain place at home for reading? Um, well, I have a certain group of places um, for reading. The place I read the most is on my bed. My bed is big and I can spread out on my bed. And I need plenty of room to spread out because not only do I have to have myself in my book, but I have to have my book journal where I keep um, all my notes uh, on the books that I read. And I have to have my little tabs for my books because I tab each place where I have, where I have written, up, written up a note. Plus, I have to have a Sharpie to, to write what number in that order, you know, the order of the tags, you know, one, two, three, four, etc. Um, plus, I have to have a pencil so I can underline the text in the book that I'm making the note about. And plus a pen to write in my book journal with. <laughs> and not only do I have to have all those personal things, but I have to have room for Ninja. Ninja is my cat and he is always in whatever room I am in. There he is, preferably right up next to me if he can manage it. So if I'm sitting in a chair, then he wants to get up in the chair with me and he's right in my lap and he's leaving hair all over the place and it's in the air and it's getting on my face and it's just a whole thing he's in the way. But on my bed, he can get up, he can snuggle up next to me and then he's not in the way and everybody's happy. Um, the other place I read is my back patio. Um, when the weather is nice and there is not a plethora of bugs flying around, I read on my back patio. <clears throat> However, if there's too many bugs, like in the deep summer, I don't like it. I don't like bugs. Um, the third place I read is my kitchen table. I go through phases where I cook a lot. Um, I really like to cook. It's kind of a hobby. And so uh, during the phases where I'm cooking all the time, I like to have my book and all of my stuff spread out on the kitchen table so I can ninja hair <laughs> so I can go back and forth <clears throat> between cooking and my book uh, let's see bookmark or rendered piece of paper and for me that is both um, I do prefer bookmarks but sometimes I'm in a situation where I don't have access to a bookmark for instance if I'm out of town um, and I have picked up a book somewhere and I don't have a bookmark with me because I don't carry bookmarks on me. I'll just use whatever is at hand, something in my purse, you know, something, um, you know, like if I'm in a bookstore and I'm like, and I'm, and I've read a chapter or two while standing there look, perusing books, then I'll grab a pamphlet or something in my purse and I'll stick it in the book to mark where I was, um, so that I can pick it back up when I get home with it. Um, and then of course, if I'm out of town and I don't have anything, like one time I, um, was in Kansas city and um, I had picked up this book and I didn't have a bookmark and I was in the car and I was like what the heck so I just took the book the uh, parking claim ticket from the hotel <laughs> out of the window and used it in my book and I've hung on to it because this little thing actually is a wonderful bookmark it's one of my favorite things to use it's really thin cardboard but even thinner than like a thin cardboard bookmark and um, but still thick enough to where I can just flip the book open very very easily and it's like the perfect size and everything so I just I just hung on to it and keep using it all and I'll continue to use it till I wear the thing out um, but my favorite kind of bookmark is um, an actual bookmark which this is my very favorite one um, my favorite type of course is the medium-sized thin cardboard bookmarks and this one is my favorite you can see it says cool story po and it's my favorite because I have a black cat ninja is a black cat and um, Edgar Allan Poe is one of my very favorite authors I love his stories and I especially love his poetry and so this bookmark is brandy all the way um, something else I do is I like to write the books um, that I have um, used the bookmark with on the back if I can manage it, if there's room, and this, this bookmark is perfect for it. So I have the little books that I've written on the back here. Um, the other kind of bookmark I like to use are the, car again, it's gotta be cardboardy, thin, thinner cardboard and not too slippery, um, with the tassel. Um, I don't like to use the tassels normally, but I do like the tassels for big, thick books. Um, for whatever reason, the big thick books just seem to swallow any bookmark I use in them. And with the tassel, it makes it a lot easier for me to just find my spot, flip it open without having to do a lot of fumbling. Um, and then 
I have one bookmark here that I have. It's my oldest bookmark that I'm going to share just because it's very nostalgic for me. And since my mother did ask me to make this video, I'm sure she would be interested. Um, this bookmark here is from the um, Tyler Romance book series. When I was um, 21, I had a subscription to Harlequin Romance and I did not get that subscription because I liked contemporary romance. I did re read romance back then, but it was always historical, only historical romance. But I was very interested in this particular series because there is a murder mystery and you get a little bit of the murder mystery in each book. It was a 12 book series. Um, and each each one was like a, an individual romance, a particular couple, and then each one furthered the murder mystery until it was solved in the last book. And I thought that was such a fun book series, and I still have that book series. But this bookmark was so good. It's like not colored board, it's like thick paper, and it didn't slide, and it was like the first like really good bookmark that I had ever come across and so I hung on to it. If I tried to use it now, the thing would just fall apart on me. It's so old, so I don't really use it. I just keep it for nostalgic purposes. But as you can see, I've torn this, torn the heck out of this thing. <laughs> and I, uh, the edges got so frayed <clears throat> that I ended up cutting them off with those um, patterned scissors, you know? So anyways, yeah, I need to put this in my actual, like, when I'm done, when I fill up a spiral notebook, then I take the pages out and I like put them in a three ring binder. And I really need to retire this to the three ring, ring binder and keep letting it sit around. It's going to get destroyed if I keep doing that. Now I'll tell you about a kind of bookmark that I hate and that are metal bookmarks. Oh, metal bookmarks slide right out of the books. You cannot do anything with a metal bookmark. Completely pointless. Um, I've never had a metal, tried a metal bookmark that would stay in a book for me. For one thing, the metal is usually too thick. Um, it, it leaves, it, there's just not, you can't get it down in the crease of the book to stay. And the other thing, it's slippery. So it just, even if you manage to get it in the crease, it just slides right off the page. It just slides right out of there. Uh, any kind of, um, any kind of tumbling, even slight tumbling, the bookmark just falls right out. This one in particular is super tiny. Which, so this bookmark is totally useless, but I bought it because I thought it was really pretty and I didn't realize that I wasn't going to like metal, bu metal bookmarks. Um, so I'm keeping it. I'm going to put it on my cork board just because I think it's real pretty. Is that focusing? Don't have my glasses on. Yeah, it's focusing. Okay. Um, okay. So that was a long-winded explanation for bookmark or random paper. Let's see, can you stop reading or do you have to stop at a chapter or a certain amount of pages? Well, I prefer to stop at the end of a chapter or where there's a break in the text. However, that I rarely ever can do that. I, I can't ever just sit down and read. Um, I am continuously interrupted anytime I try to read. It is just rare if I sit down and read without interruption. So I always end up stopping in whatever random place I'm at at the time. <laughs> Do you eat or drink while reading? Yes, I always have water on hand, no matter where I'm at, car, work, home, wherever I'm at. I always have a bottle of water. And um, eating, um, yes, but I don't eat meals or any kind of um, messy snack food. Like, I'm not about to eat Cheetos or potato chips or crackers, you know. But I will have, like, a box of Junior Mints or um, hot tamales or, um, you know, Mike and Ike's or Raisinets or whatever. Um, every once in a while, I will um, snack on those while I'm reading. Um, multitasking, music or TV while reading? Music and TV, absolutely not. I cannot focus on reading and listening to music or reading and watching TV, which I, I don't even watch TV anyway. That's, that's a rare thing. And if I do, it's usually some documentary on curiosity or something. Um, or or uh, I'll watch episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation on Netflix. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, no, I can't do anything that requires brain power while I'm reading. Um, I do, however, like take my book all over the house. If I'm doing laundry, I will like walk with my book and read while I'm walking and then I'll set it on the dryer, switch out my laundry and read while I'm doing that. Um, or if I'm folding laundry, I'll read while I'm doing that. Um, uh, that that sort of thing. Um, the other thing is, like I said earlier, uh, when I'm when I'm cooking a lot, I'll I'll take my book with me onto the kitchen table and I'll read while I'm cooking. Um, let's see, one book at a time or several at once. <clears throat> well, I I used to only read one book at a time. 
I did not even look at another book until I was done reading the one I was on. So I had never in my entire life read more than one book at a time. Now in the last year that has changed. Now I usually have about two books going. I usually have two physical books and an audio book going at the same time. <laughs> I think it's because I've recently got more active with reading. Like I'm in a book club now and I was in a book club before, uh, before the one I'm in now. And so I would be reading the book, the one with the book club, but I would also be reading one for my, for just myself. And then plus I always have an audio book going now and I didn't used to do audio books. I still don't really like audiobooks. I do one audiobook a month or one every other month. My credits build up. Like right now I have three book credits. Um, but I, and I'm still only halfway through my current audiobook. So I usually I usually have two physical books and one audiobook going. Um, let's see. Reading at home or everywhere. Well, mostly I read at home. Um, I don't do things like I don't, I don't take book, I don't go to the grocery store and read while I'm in the grocery store standing in line. I don't do things like that, but I will like take my books to work with me. And I always have books on hand because if I'm in the doctor's office waiting to see the doctor, I'll read during that time. If I am at work and I have downtime, I'll read during my downtime. So, um, reading out loud or reading out loud or silently in your head? Well, both. Um, there are occasions well, where I will read out loud, not read to myself if I'm reading to another person or now that I'm doing um, these book videos, I of course will read to the camera, to my phone. Um, but mostly, yeah, just in my head, just reading for myself only. Do you read ahead or even skip pages? I do not do that with fiction. If it's fiction, I read it from beginning to end, period. I think maybe once every couple of years, I might actually flip ahead at a book, but it's usually to find out, like if I'm not enjoying a book very much, I may flip ahead in the book to see if I think I might enjoy it later. Um, but I don't do that if I'm not enjoying the story, I'll usually just DNF it. Um, I will usually do that if it's a writing style. Like for example, um, I recently DNF'd um, The 10,000 Doors of January, not because I didn't think the story was good, but because I didn't like the writing style. So I had flipped ahead and read, you know, six or seven pages in the middle of the book to see if the writing style got any better or if the things I didn't like had changed and they didn't, so I ended up DNFing, DNFing it. But that's the only occasion that I can even think of that I will read ahead in a, in a fiction novel. Now, nonfiction, it's a different story. Story. Nonfiction, I will skip around in the book. Like before I actually start reading a nonfiction book, I will be opening up. I will skip around to different places in the book and read sections um, before I actually go back and like start reading from the beginning. And then even when I do start reading from the beginning, I will frequently like be reading this spot. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to flip ahead. You know what I mean? And just something will have triggered my curiosity and I'll flip to the end of the book to see what's in there or I'll go someplace in the middle. Or if I'm towards the end of the book, um, they'll reference something that I had read about earlier and, but I don't quite rem remember it. So I'll have to go back in the book and like find that particular thing and like reread that section. So breaking the spine or keeping it like new, keeping it like new. I cannot stand breaks in the spines of my books. That's actually one of the many reasons that I prefer hardbacks is because it is difficult to keep the spines clean. You always, you know, depending on how good the book paperback is, they have these ones that are kind of floppier and so they're, they're pretty easy to not break the spine, but most of them aren't like that. Most of them you have to sort of bend the pages out and like keep the spine tucked in. That way you don't put a crease in the spine. I, I cannot stand that. And my least favorite book is a ma mass market paperback because of that reason. I just cannot stand those creases in the spine. They just drive me nuts. Um, do you write in your books? I didn't used to. I used to be one of those people who were like, don't ever write in a book. That is just a cardinal sin. No writing in a book but not anymore. Um, I have always kept notes on the books I've read my, my entire life, but I finally got to a point where it was just too hard for me to go back and find the, um, the part in the book that I was referencing. I'd have to hunt down the page number and then find it, find it on the page and everything. And it just took so, so, so much longer. So what I started doing was underlining the place that I'm making the note on and putting a tab there with a number reference so that I can very easily and quickly find it when I'm going back to look for something that I've, um, that I've found in my book journal in, for that particular, you know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> stumble all over too much. Okay, and uh, let's see. Oh, that's the last prompt. So yes, 
so yeah that is uh the reading habits book tag and i actually would like to tag rachel over at the shades of orange for this book tag um i love her channel and i love um her take on books and she's really helped me figure out um the horror she's really helping me figure out the horror genre and so i would be very interested in what her reading habits are so rachel you consider yourself tagged